Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a Colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God really dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh you will die. But if by the spirit you put death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, 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 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God so much for these words that come to us from Christ today. And we pray that through these words, Christ may speak to us today a living word. I want to begin today with a question. What do you honestly think about God? Or to put it in another way, who is God for you today? Our understanding of who God is shapes our whole life forever. It determines the way we relate to God It determines the way we relate to ourselves. It determines the way we relate to other people and it determines how we behave every day. It determines how we live in this world on a a daily basis. Our understanding of God shapes not only who we are but how we live and that is why there's nothing more important about you or about me than what comes into our mind when I say the word. God. Now, these words of Jesus in today's gospel reading are very powerful words. Jesus says that all things have been committed to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. These words remind us of the breathtaking claim of the Christian faith. The Christian faith affirms that if you really want to know what God is like, look in the direction of Jesus Christ. That in Jesus Christ, God is uniquely and supremely revealed. That in Jesus' words, his life, his deeds, his death, his resurrection, we catch a glimpse of who God really is. And so today, I want to invite you to look for a few moments with me at God through the eyes of Jesus. Firstly, when we look at God through the eyes of Jesus, we begin to see that God is utterly good and beautiful. There's a moment in Matthew's gospel when a rich young ruler comes up to Jesus and says, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replies, why do you ask me about what is good? There's only one who is good. And when we look through the eyes of Jesus, we catch a glimpse of a God who is utterly, utterly good. But let's be honest. There are some moments in life when it's easy to say God is good. Your boss calls you in and says, you've been doing really well. You've been promoted. God is good. You go to the doctor. Your blood tests come back negative. God is good. You've been longing for a child and you're pregnant. God is good. But life doesn't always work like that. There are moments that come when our life feels like it's falling apart. Things happen. We don't want them to happen. We get the news that we, we, we don't want to hear. Um, our lives are marred by tragedy, suffering, death. 
And maybe you're in that place right now, and I want to invite you, as I invite myself, to look at God through the eyes of Jesus. And when I do it, I'm invited into a deep, ruthless trust. And I say, God, even though life is not working out the way I want it, even though I cannot understand what is happening in me and around me, I'm going to trust that you are good. And I'm going to trust that you are working out your good purposes in my life forever. Secondly, when we look at God through the eyes of Jesus, we begin to see that God loves us and accepts us unconditionally, no strings attached. One of the most powerful verses in the Bible is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now notice what these verses does not say, doesn't say, for God was so angry with the sinful, messy world that he sends his son into this world to condemn it and to get us in shape, or, or we've had it. That's not what the text says. It says that when God sees the mess and the pain and our sinfulness, God comes to us. He pours out his love into us in Jesus Christ. And can you accept that today? Can you accept that you are loved with a love that will never let you go? That there is nothing that you can do to make God love you more and that there is nothing you can do that can make God love you less. Can you accept that today? Can I say one more thing? When when we look at God through the eyes of Jesus, we begin to see that God is fiercely opposed to human evil and human sin. Jesus has many challenging things to say about God, and one of them is found in John 3.36, when he says, whoever believes in the Son, whoever follows the Son, that person has eternal life. They enter into a new quality of life. But whoever rejects the Son... Whoever rejects the way of Christ will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Now, because God loves us and loves this world, and because God wants the best for us, he is fiercely opposed to anything that spoils our lives, our relationships, our country, and our world. And that is why I think it's so important for us to enter into a deep confession about our own sin and evil before God. Not to focus too much on other people's sin and evil, but to deal with my own. Because that is when we will experience Jesus' words of freedom. Come to me, you who are labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Lord God, we long to catch a glimpse of you, of your goodness, of your unconditional love and acceptance, of your fierce loyalty towards us. And we ask and pray that you will draw us, Lord, into a relentless trust, that you will draw us into a, that place of acceptance and receiving of the love that you freely give. And Lord, that you will draw us to that place where we can open our hearts and share honestly and openly the brokenness that taint this relationship and that keep us away from you. The deepest desire of our heart is to know you and love you, and follow you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.